Got two more strategies left on this. Let's talk about some of my falling wedge is one of my favorite strategies to trade because it's a significant reversal pattern. Depending on if the wedge is falling down to a support. This pattern is recognized by a steep downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. And eventually price will get super tight in this wedge. And then that's primarily from so many people shorting and the price starts to slow down and all these people are jumping on short, jumping on the short train. And eventually the price just stops and gets so tight that it doesn't go down anymore and people keep shorting it. And then what happens right after that is since there's no more sellers, it, there's two things that could potentially happen. The sellers that are shorting that aren't seeing any profit or might be in a loss or going to exit their trade or people are going to notice this, that people are selling, but the price is not moving down anymore and people are going to start buying it. And that releases a huge buy stop run to the upside, a uh, huge pop higher out of this wedge. You want to wait for price to close outside of the upper downtrend line, then you want to buy it. Uh, and you can also buy the retest, which I typically will wait for as well. Um, so yeah, you don't want to buy, you want to wait as long as you can until this wedge gets super tight and then wait for the price to break higher. You don't want to trade long um, inside this as it's making lower lows and lower highs. You want to wait for that higher low to form. So here is a falling wedge breakout example. And this is on the NASDAQ futures. So this is the 512 tick chart, which you'll see this particular pattern all day long. Uh, you'll see falling and rising wedges all day long. But in particular here, the falling wedge, you can see I have just drawn it with trend lines in this area. You can see the wedge down here. So price is rejecting one of my levels that I had here. It rejected a strong resistance and then it formed a falling wedge on the, on the tick chart to retest support. If you look at, I don't have it drawn here, but if you look at support here, we had resistance in this area and support down here. And then we finally broke above it, came back, tested and went higher. So that's going to be an area of interest once we come down here. So as the falling wedge is forming and getting tighter and tighter as it lands on a resistance, let's see what happens after that. So I have the, the zone slash levels drawn here in that green box. And then once you notice that the price breaks above that down wedge, it clears it. You can buy once that candle closes and put your stop below that lower that first candle outside of the wedge, like I have there. And then you can look for your first target to be back where some of the consolidation was there. And then you can look to trail the rest up to um, the previous breakdown level where started forming this wedge, which in this case, you would just keep trailing below the lower, the higher lows until you get taken out, which would be in this area. So like I mentioned, you should also, you could also wait for the retest and we, you just look at that. We came back after we rejected the support up here where we took profit on the first trade, came back, same exact, exact trade you could have taken, right in our zone, bounced on that area and came back up, you would have had the same exact trade as you did the first time. If it worked the first time, there's a high probability that's gonna work the second time. I'll try a trade at least two, three times if it works the first time. Lastly, let's talk about the rising wedge breakdown strategy. So this is recognized by a steep uptrend of higher highs and higher lows. So, as I mentioned, the falling wedge is from a lot of people shorting and the price just, it starts contracting in this really tight wedge structure. And eventually everyone that's jumping on short, the price isn't going down anymore. So there's only one way price can go at that point. If your sellers are keep selling the price, price is eventually gonna reverse and pop to the upside. It's the same thing with this falling, this rising wedge. People keep buying and buying and buying or in this steep wedge, uh, triangle to the upside and eventually we hit a peak where people keep buying and the prices are moving higher so eventually people will notice that 
uh, or people will realize that the price isn't moving anymore and they'll look to sell their position. And then other people that recognize this will look to short and then eventually price falls steeply out of this rising wedge to the downside. And you'd want to short the breakdown once it breaks, the candle breaks lower out of this wedge to the downside uh, on decent volume. And we want to put a stop above that breakdown candles high. So here's an example on the NASDAQ futures. This is exactly the same chart that I just showed you on the falling wedge example. But now let's take a look at the rising wedge. And you can see after price bounced off the support, it formed a rising wedge where we're just slowly getting, we're at a nice up channel, but the, the channel is starting to converge towards each other. This isn't the tightest one I've seen, but the key difference to note here is that it's not a parallel channel. We're making we have this trend line lower and eventually if you keep drawing it out, they're going to cross like this to the upside and it comes right to a resistance. And then what do we have at resistance that shows us this is a potential short time. We have a lower high here. If this structure breaks, we're going to have a short setup and more or less that's what happens here. We break that support there and here's your retest. Let me actually show you where this entry would be. There's the, the entry that I'd be looking for. That's the second lower high that formed and the lower low as well. We want to look to enter on that candle and it also is a doji candle. We want to put a stop above those highs before that for a push lower here. And the first target would be back to the first support where we had some consolidation on the push up in the rising wedge, which would be in this area. And then next target, we look to trail it back down where we'd actually have taken, uh, that's where the, the falling wedge actually broke up to the upside. If we look over here, we had a zone there too. That would be our take profit area. So that wraps up lesson seven on trading strategies. Please, please let me know if you have any questions or need any clarification on any of the stuff that I was talking about in this video. I'm here to help you guys. So as Kristen, just understand that in order to see some success with any of the stuff that I just taught you here, you have to continually apply uh, these types of methods using these tools and just understanding what works best for you and your, that meets your trading style. Um, and I promise you that this stuff works, but you just have to put in the time and effort and work. Um, not only just the technical analysis part of things, but also your mindset. Uh, and having the confidence to pull the trigger when you see setups like this. So um, with that said, I uh, hope to make another video, some more videos for you guys soon to teach you as much as I can on what I know that works trading to make consistent profits. So let me know if you guys have any questions and I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, day, whatever you decide to do today and uh, chat with you guys soon. Bye.